What's up, everybody? My name is Kason. Welcome back to the WDL. This is the season four week one video for the Wazette division. If you haven't already uh, watched, there are three other videos for the champions, Heinler and Rondal League. They came out in that order. I'm going to try my best to avoid any sort of spoilers across divisions. So if you haven't watched those already, you should be good. But just keep that in mind in case I accidentally slip up at some point. So let's take a look to see what 12 teams are going to be competing against each other this season in the Wazette division. First of all, top to bottom, that is the draft order for the league. And we started off with Mao, brand new player, coach of Nora's gang. Second, we had Alcor, coach of Royally Funked. Uh, formerly a winner of the WBEL, if you guys know what that is. Greatestness, coach of Elite. This is going to be his second season in the WBL. Shadow91, coach of the Vanergand. Tayo, coach of Witch of the Empire. Quick shout out, Tayo, unfortunately, his battles will not be in this video. He is also having an issue with the Android 14 uh, whole thing, and he basically can't get into the game. So his matches will be delayed till later in the season, but I still wanted to shout him out here. He has not dropped out or anything. He's still in the division, but he will be 0-0 zero and zero at the end of this week. Garokin, six team here on the board. Coach of Bago Cats. We have Dervis, coach of Section 9. Mifel of the Lightning Warriors. Hasoka with the Eggplant Brigade. Nemo of Lions Guard. Isvar of Elda's Angels. And Maraxa, Maraxis, excuse me, with the Bento Box Bullies. 12 awesome people, 12 awesome players. I'm really looking forward to seeing how they do this season. With Tayo's battles not happening this week, we should have 10 battles coming in for you guys today. Should be five on each map, and uh, it should be a good time. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's check out the matches. Opening up the Wazette League here in week number one, we have Elite, coached by Greatestness versus Royally Funked, coached by Alcor. Quick shout out to Alcor as he is the Wotif Blind Enthusiast League Season 1 champion. So this should be an interesting matchup here. As we have a double Mace plus Noctis composition coming out from Alcor. A bunch of status nullifications, one hit barrier on the entire squad, as well as the Rally Magic coming out from Glacella Regalia. And these are some units Hats off to Alcor that you do not see all the time. Noctis, Mashery, and Glacella, all pretty rare here. But we have a nice little ice water composition coming out from Greatestness as well, as I believe that was Oceanic Protection, if I saw that correctly. Leave this to me coming out from Reagan, which means there is like five or six different elemental resists on the side of Greatestness here to start this fight off. Very good stuff with the Keen Blade coming out from Zazan. All that incredible movement to get him forward. Greatestness is coming to play. A track barrier is going to be huge for Fryavia here. That is a massive magic barrier, which will do well against both Glacella and Mashery. Even with the elemental advantage, I expect Glacella not to do incredible damage to this Fryavia. Mashery, it looks like, is out of buff, so she just has the Calamity Stronghold uh, as Dragon's Grace. I believe this is the Jaden Celebrated TMR. I think it's 50% magic, so it's a pretty nice steroid. Might even be 60%, but Zazan says, here we go. Killer Cross coming down. Not a ton of damage. Tanked quite well by Elcor, but I will say it does drop the Human Resist as Noctis comes in with a ton of damage and gets the follow-up attack. Almost one-shots the Zazan, or rather Zazan. I'll probably call it both ways in this fight. Regardless, Courage is online for the Reagan as he tries to enter this fight, and Zazan is not long for this world. I'm just going to call him Big Daddy Z as he drops. It is now a 3v2 in favor of Alcor here. What can Fryevi get done, though? She can get the massive new Limit Break upgrade done. Ice Prison. It's not much of a prison as it doesn't root anybody, but it does drop attack resistances, makes them tankier against magic damage, and gives her haste now, which is just incredible. And this team from Greatestness, I expect to be very fast with both of those hastes. Also, the early Keen Blade. This could be trouble. Crimson Blade Strike comes in for huge damage, not knocking out the Noctis. And Fryavia should be able to chain up. Nice little Slash Chain. Actually, not an Ice Chain because the attack Reagan used was a Fire Attack. But regardless, still good damage. Smile Practice Online now, though, for Moshery means Protect and Shell. Going to make them a little bit tankier. Can they get through these two mace units? Mountain Dive comes through. Honestly, Glacella Regalia tanking this very well. I think she does get a good amount of AoE resistance, which is showing right here. But Grand Explosion comes through. 
okay amount of damage onto the Reagan, but as we said, that magic tank for Ievia, it doesn't matter with the elemental uh, advantage. She still takes basically no damage, and what the hell is this movement? Because of the dead bodies in the way, Fryavia actually moves further away to try and go around to get to the back line, as the Zur Blade Strike coming in from Reagan is going to take out the Moshery, and now all of a sudden this is going to be really, really tough for Alcor, and Glacella actually gets out of the way to attack the Fryavia, but again, she is doing an absolutely elite, pun intended, uh, job of tanking this damage here with Glacella Regala going to hit again for Rending Fangs. I think that might break barriers. If it does, regardless, that damage is not high. Fryavia, just an absolute beast of a magic tank. Regan going to buff himself up again, try and close in on uh, this Re Regalia Glacella to try and do damage. Silence Blade lands. If you thought there was any chance for Elcor to come back here, it is now officially over with the silence here, as Greatestness should be able to pick up this win soon. Surge Strike coming in for 3k. I mean, Glacella is doing a great job tanking, but unfortunately just can't get much damage done. Silence Blade just going to be refreshed, so she is just going to hit her with her stick. I guess it is a little bit of a magic stick, not a regular stick. And Fryavia, with five actions left, does it go to turns, or can she get a kill here? Just a little bit more chip. Reagan should be able to finish this off, though, with 100 AP for himself. And he says, hey, I want to make it look fancy. He's going to summon Odin. Zantetsuken, going to come down from the sky, slice her up with his sword. And goodbye, Glacella, as 1,245 damage comes through. The Esper map effect comes in place, and Greatestness of Elite picks up the first win of the Wazette League in Week 1. Congratulations. Second fight of Week 1 for the Wazette League is none other than Maraxis versus Nemo. Two brand new players to the WDL, but obviously not brand new players to the game. This should be interesting here, as it looks like an Ice Water comp coming out from Araxas. The Padfoot, the uh, Pissarro team are coming out on turn one for the Rafael to get her nice and speedy. Her agility can get absolutely staggeringly high. And now with the Vela Stars of Swiftness, this is an entirely hasted up team for Maraxis. This is going to be one of the fastest teams you have seen. As Boko's protection comes in from the Barts here, so going to try and get that physical barrier online, that can certainly help against this Rafael's damage. Hopefully he can get his follow-up attack as well as double sword users along with the Barts. So he says, hey, I don't need the long range follow-up attacks. I just need somebody to buy some time for Barts so that he can come in and clean up. Rafael going to walk forward closer to to the fight here as it looks like the black robed witch tmr for velis here to get himself a barrier as well and interestingly enough no follow-ups at all this is actually the king bradley tmr i actually don't hate this uh idea to get this barts nice and hasted nice and speedy I'm not sure if that was part of the plan but even if it is i actually don't mind it the aoe resist down from celis though is going to allow rafael to kind of capitalize here heavenly wrath is going to take out the gafgarian the poor guy doesn't even have his 140 yet Gumi, where is the Final Fantasy Tactics rerun? That is what we're all wondering as Taunting Blade comes out from Titus. Gonna gather some hate. So the tank is moving to the side, doing a nice solid for the Bart so that he doesn't get caught in any sort of AoEs. But here comes Blades of Legend. This is a huge limit break. How much damage is it going to do? Um, did that say 4460 or 446? I think it had to have been 4460. I might have seen that wrong. Cleansing Blade comes in, does a decent amount of damage to this Titus, though, and he is not long for this world. One unfortunate thing about Titus is he's a great tank, but he's weak to Slash, which is the most common damage type in the game, as Velus is going to top off this Celis, and this is giving me throwbacks, maybe a little bit of PTSD back from the Celis Velus meta, as Bart's is going to do a good amount of damage to the Celis, but misses the Rafael. She is quite Dodgy, and she is putting in work here. The armor cleaver going to drop the defense, and it also gives her agility and luck up. So if she wasn't dodgy enough, she is certainly going to be now. Velis is going to come in, clean up, says, I don't care about your physical barrier. Here's a bunch of ice magic. And Maraxis, in his debut in the WDL, looks very, very strong here. Hats off to Nemo for a well-played fight as well. I did like the idea, but it was just too much to overcome from Maraxis' side. Congratulations to him and GG to both players. For the third fight of the day, we've got a brand new player to the WDL, Mao, coach of Nora's gang. Obviously, Nora's gang rocking the snow on the front here, getting the reprieve up so that he has courage online. 
And it looks like Yurel is going to go Indomitable Stance, get Courage Online for herself as well. On the other side of the map, we have Shadow91, a returning player, coach of the Vanergan with the Rose Sanctuary of Undying. And this gives Black Rose Helena basically everything that she could ever want here, as she is alongside Grace and Uni. So double missile units alongside the Helena. So basically, can you thin them up? Can you do a little bit of chip damage and lower those health bars so that Helena can come in and clean up the battle that is the strategy but the uh arrow fall coming out from uni is pretty huge here this actually nullifies the haste that would have came in from the fast cast for murmur so very nice to see here as fatal oath coming out from the rel unfortunately for uh mouse side there's no courage on the side of shadow 91 so that buff's not going to help a whole lot but regardless they both have at least courage on their side to hopefully try and resist some of that kill threat arm shot comes out from Krace. does this disable land i don't think it, it did land oh my goodness that is crippling for mao here the arm shot from Krace is now the mvp alongside the haze nullify from uni these two low cost missile units honestly putting in work here doing exactly what they need to do so that helena can come in and clean up later but urel says not so fast red in the heavens comes in almost kills the uni would have been nice for mount to clean up that kill right here but barely just misses on it kneecapper coming down nerfs the jump stat and murmur is down somehow Krace finds that angle and finds that damage as tri denervation comes through Put Snow down to his courage, but he never got the ability to get his heal back up, so he is only at one health here, and I think we probably know how this fight is going to turn out. Yorel would have to pull off some crazy shenanigans to win this. She might be able to find a double kill. Does she have the AoE? No, she doesn't, and you need to make matters worse. Reflexes her, unfortunately, says, you're not killing me today. Sharpshoot comes in for 1,100 damage. Helena might be able to clean this up here. Obviously, Rel still has her Courage on, but Deconstruction is going to come through. Proc down to that one health, and Kray should be able to finish it off with a shot to her back. And Shadow91 looking really impressive in week number one. That Disable, obviously, from Kray's absolutely crucial. The Haste Nullify from Uni was big as well, and Helena just comes in to clean it up. Very well executed. Props to both players, but congratulations to Shadow91. Next up to bat, we've got Eldas, Angels versus Eggplant Brigade, Isvar versus Soka, two outstanding players. We'll have to see how this one turns out. Undying Lion coming out from the jump with the Elda, King of the Lions, alongside two spear units. So a lovely full spear comp. Love to see it. This is very, very cool. Keenblade coming out from the Winter Mashri. And on the other side of the map, it looks like we have some Ferris, Balo, and Summer Elsie coming out. Summer Elsie is a fantastic unit. Could really nerf some of that AP. But that AP restore online for Elda might be pretty huge here to make sure that he has plenty, even if she lands the limit break. He's going to get his barrier online, so he's ready to go. Dragon Skill gives Protect to the Winter Mastery, so they should be able to resist some of this physical damage, as it looks like Protect is the name of the game for Isvar. Lorenzo has his online as well, but Hosoka says, I will see your Keenblade, and I will match it with Balo as he walks forward. Pirate Onslaught coming in, 2894. Honestly tanked pretty damn well by this Winter Mastery. Considering the elemental disadvantage, obviously she has the Protect to help out. And I said Protect was the name of the game. Here it is, the Vega TMR on Summer Elsie. She now has Protect as well with a chance to Berserk. If she lands Berserk on the entire party, this fight will be over. Pirate's Onslaught this time hits much, much better. Very good damage. I think she even chained with herself there. Balo, can he clean it up? No, he's going to hit the Lorenzo instead here with the Trinity Burst. And note that it is Trinity Burst, not Taunting Blade, so no extra hate here. But here comes the Dreamy Typhoon. How much damage does it do? Does it Berserk anybody? It kills the Winter Mastery, does not Berserk Lorenzo. Not sure if Isvar's running a Berserk uh, Trust Stone. Very good chance that he probably is, as that TMR is everywhere. But the Taunting Blade on Elda, this changes things. Now it makes sure that he has the hate. Lorenzo might be able to live as the Dive of Destruction comes through. Removes, I think, to protect from Summer Elsie and a decent amount of damage. But Ferris cannot get through this barrier on Elda, King of the Lions. Devitalizing Glint takes out Lorenzo, though. So she says, screw your hate. I don't care. I'm taking out Lorenzo anyway, as Lion's Drain does a good chunk of damage. Hasoka is in a decent position here now in a 3v1. But if there's any unit who can overcome this, it would be this new Elda, as he is a beast. But here comes the Golem Esper. 
Interestingly enough, this uh, field effect will not benefit anybody except for Balo in terms of the elemental resist, but it might drop damage on the other side too. I'm not entirely sure. Finally, they do get through this physical barrier though, and Summer Elsie with the magic orb actually just tickles him basically, but they are stacked up for a big old AoE. Taunting Blade takes out Summer Elsie. Balo is almost ready to fall to bring Super Balo into the fight as Counter Maw, the counter comes through and heals him up for a good amount of damage. That could be the difference in this fight as Saintly Cross comes through, kills the Balo, and I'm sorry, uh, did his re-raise get removed? I might have missed that. I think Lorenzo removed it as he does have re-raise removal, and that changes his fight entirely. With Balo now gone, Elda is pulling off this 1v3. Ferris basically out of AP, can't really pull off anything of note here. With 18 left, what can she do? Spirit Breaker is 2900, not bad. But between the counter that Elda got earlier in the fight to heal himself up with the extra damage, I think health bars wise, that's basically the difference in this fight. And Lorenzo, I believe, stripped the re-raise from Balo. I don't know how else he would have not come back. I think that's what happened. So I'm sorry if I missed that one, but man, oh man, an excellent fight. And Isvar down in the 1v3, Elda King of the Lions, his mascot, comes through for him and wins it. An excellent fight. Heading into the final fight on this map for this week before we head to the Bamboo Grove. It is Meeful with the Lightning Warriors versus Garokin with Bag O Cats. I love to see it here. Glacella Flagbearer alongside Silma and Ramana. So a couple of Pierce units along with the supportive Silma. Here we go. And it looks like a full Pierce team coming out from Garokin. Love to see that as well as we have Dialdo, Winter Luartha, and McLeod. So five Pierce units on the field in this fight. Very cool to see. All the buffs getting online here. Ramada going to pop Revitalize to try and make sure she has plenty of AP. Of AP. Words are hard for this fight as it looks like the Dialdo is going to walk forward. Get that Wall of Despair online. Get his shell and rock on 15,000 HP. He might be hard to take down. Although if anybody could, it would be this Glacella. She's going to go all out assault. So she has her barrier already. Now she also has some additional crit rate and all that good stuff. McLeod, is he in range to deal damage? He is not. He's going to go with the Arrow Shield Melody. Get that accuracy up. That part really isn't going to matter, but he is basically doing the best impression of what was on the other side with the additional crit rate as well. And Fight Like a Pirate coming out from Garokin's Winter Luartha. So, Haste going to be very useful. Hate Up as well going to be useful for Dialdo. And on the side of Garokin, hoping that he can tank up all this damage while these two backline units take the enemy team down. Sharp Spear Tranquil coming through. As soon enough, we should be entering the fight here. Silma is going to, I think, haste up Ramada here. She could be going for herself. As All Out Assault, I think, is just basically refreshed. But these uh, units are taking some very strange paths. Taking a look at the turn order, 36 actions left. As Binding Javelin does good damage to start this fight off. But Ramada will catch a haste. I'm sure she would have appreciated that slight defense increase before that hit happened. Obviously doesn't get it off in time. The momentum comes through. King Bradley TMR on the McLeod. So double hasted up units on both sides. We'll see. Dialdo not in range to deal any damage. Ramada should be able to hit him though. What is she going to go for? Dread Spear Dive removes any buffs and healing power down. 2400 damage. Not too bad. As Glacella Flagbearer, this is the unit you got to see how much damage can she do. She should be the main carrier on this side. 9,600 is a hell of a lot of damage onto that Dialdo. And that is rough to see if you are Garokin, as it looks like the tank might not survive very much longer. And Winter Luartha, still out of range, is going into buff repetition here. She might not be able to close the gap and get any damage down. McLeod, is he going to do the same thing? Will he be able to walk forward and hit somebody? Finally, he does. Neuralizing Lance removes the haste. But honestly, that physical barrier online for Glacella doing a very good job of tanking. Thundera coming out from Silma doing almost nothing, though. Dialdo obviously tanking well against Silma. But the tank is down, and this is rough if you are Garokin. Glacella Flagbearer is still very, very healthy. Shining Conviction does a ton of damage to the McLeod, and they need to basically put her down right now to have a chance in this fight. But to give her a chance, here is the Limit Break. Explosive Express will deal a good amount of damage. Also gives her a nice little physical, uh, or sorry, HP shield of 5,000 damage, both kinds as McLeod, can he chain up on this pierce damage? No, he's going to go 
offline and kill the Silma. She drops, which is great for Garokin, but I think you need to kill this Glacella to have a chance. Nighthawk comes from Ramada for 5,000 dropping the McLeod. And Meeple is in good position to try and take this fight. Barrier break Lance. She is in range to break the barrier. One problem with Glacella sometimes is she doesn't get in range to do that. But she had no problems this time, which means that 5,000 HP shield is gone. But Battering Lance from Winter Luartha takes her down to Courage. Hold on a second. Dread Spear Dive does a good amount, though. And Glacella looking at the turn order. I don't think Winter Luartha has Reflex. She has no way around this. She is going to drop. So ended up being actually a pretty close fight. But Meeple and Lightning Warriors end up taking the W. Huge congratulations on his first win in the WDL. Moving over to the Bamboo Grove on the left side, we have Dervis, brand new player, but longtime Friday Night Fights player, coach of Section 9 versus Alcor, coach of Royally Funked. And it looks like the Haze TMR going to come out right away for Starlight Elena, alongside the Bunny's Protection for Sylvie. And obviously Sylvie with her bus being able to stand in the back can be very useful to try and get some heals and extra shields up online. I do love this team coming out from Cha Cha Chalcor though, as he has got the gun, mace, and sword knight synergy all on that Melnia card. Very, very cool to see. Huge magic health shield online for the Winter Wrath. Could be pretty damn useful versus the Starlight Helena and Sylvie here. I'm curious to see what Lissette can do. Keenblade coming out from the Tyrell. He's going to start walking forward. I don't think he's going to be able to get his big old debuff resistance buff online, though, which can be pretty huge for his survivability. Looks like Dragon's Bloodline coming out from the Alaya Rundal to try and nullify any sort of status effects coming from the other side. And Courage is online for Starlight Elena, so she is ready to rock and roll here. Befuddling Spearfall comes through. Good damage onto the Lissette, but gets dodged by Starlight Elena, which means... The question now is, does Alcor have the accuracy to beat Dervis here? I don't think Winter Wrath, Tyrell uh, have any sort of guaranteed hits, so you're kind of relying on Sharpshoot from Aliyah here if they don't have the accuracy, which could pose a problem. Grudge Blade comes through, gets dodged by the Lissette as well, and that is brutal to see if you are Alcor as 11.6k comes from the Lissette onto the Tyrell. Oh boy, that is just rough to see if you are Alcor. Good damage onto the backline Aliyah, and this feels like it might be over before it starts here. Derv is coming to play here. He heard the crap I was talking about his roster, and he said, here I come. Hail of Bolts comes out. 5,000 damage. Good frostbite onto the uh, Lissette, as she is going to drop, but again, they cannot seem to hit this Starlight Elena, and this is probably a full life coming in from Sylvie, meaning she is going to be back into the fight. Crystal Shine Bright is tanked up very nicely for Winter Wrath, so if Winter Wrath can find the accuracy, this fight isn't over, but man, this is going to be tough. 128 AP, so she's got plenty to rock and roll here. What is she going to go for? Is it another Befuddling Spearfall? And is this a Sharpshoot or is it an AoE? It is the Limit Break, which I think got upgraded this week, which means I think it's a guaranteed hit. So who is this on? It is on Lissette. She is going to drop. That is a ton of damage. She is down for the count. But Starlight Elena has another opportunity. She's going to go backline. She's going to kill the Elia. And this is now a 2v1 in Dervis's favor. Befuddling Spearfall, a decent amount of damage onto the Sylvie. Does she go for another heal? Yes, she does. She goes for Knight's Blessing, Mashery Horn, TMR, and she honestly is basically playing a tank and a healer role because Starlight Elena is so dodgy, she's not going to target her. She's finally got through this massive uh, magic health barrier here, and Sylvie should be able to chain up with a slash attack. Clever Paladin Strike comes through. Not quite enough to kill, but the Winter Wrath is up against it. With only 500 health, she's going to go for a Magical Strike. An okay amount of damage onto the Sylvie, but Elena should be able to clean this up. And Lux Overflow will seal the deal. So, Dervis comes out swinging in week one, ends up winning his very first game of the WDL. I was joking, obviously, about the roster stuff. I don't think I actually bashed Dervis's roster too much, but he did shoot me a message in Discord, uh, poking a little fun at me and jabbing me a little, and I absolutely love it. So, huge shout out to him. Congratulations on the win. Let's check out the next fight.
four more fights remaining in this week, and this one is none other than Eggplant Brigade versus Lion's Guard, Hisoka versus Nemo. Nemo running a really interesting squad here with the Revitalize coming out from Estadio alongside Camilo and Bartz. So a couple of really powerhouse units with Bartz on one side and Soul on another, as Boko's protection is online for the Bartz. And Soul is going to go Veil of Truth, which gives protect not only to him, but also that ally here. Extra slash deck resist, huge physical health shield. She, he is going to be a problem in this match. As Dragon's Pride comes out from the Camilo, he does in his kit have a 90% uh, magic three hit barrier, but did not opt to use it here. And I wonder if he is going to be in range to hit Mia on this next turn. He's got decent movement with that Dragon's Pride. He's going to jump up in the air. So he does not have the massive magic barrier to try and protect himself from soul here. And I think the problem with uh, this fight I can already see happening is the massive physical health shield for soul. If if the Mustadio and Camilo can't break that, which theoretically uh, Camilo can break barriers as Horizontal Zontal Jump comes down for 4k follow up is decent damage. Um, if they can't get through this physical health shield, the follow-up won't do much. So we'll have to see. Pyro Calling coming out. Unit attack resist up. This is another uh, really smart tech coming up from Hisoka to try and prevent more follow-up damage. As the Chow Beans comes out, that is the Yuffie TMR. Not something I would have expected to see here, but maybe trying to dodge some of the first attacks so that Bartz can't hit. I don't know. We'll see. But Camilo, as I am chatting away, takes out the Mia. She catches the re-raise from that zombie TMR that she used. And Mistadio, I think should be able to seal the deal from here he does arm shot comes through kills the mia so it is now down to 3v2 but obviously mia is not the most terrifying unit on hasoka's team here what can bartz do he's got plenty of ap but not plenty of range here as the guard haste is there for helena and soul is entering the fight pyre of chaos and destruction tons of damage mustadio is going down a lot of damage onto bartz as well and i think to have a chance camilo needs to move close to bartz and break the barrier i believe he has a barrier break dive for nemo's sake i hope that is what he's going for if he does no it is dragon dive he has, I know in his sniper sub job, I believe he has a barrier break arrow, but apparently doesn't go for the barrier break. Salvation comes through, and the salvation for Hisoka is here as he is looking to pick up this win in this week. Helena going to start channeling a spell. I imagine just probably another haste or something like that. But Camilo says, I've had enough of this soul guy. Let me see if I can pick off the backline Helena here with Bedeviling Dive, dealing a good amount of damage, landing confusion as well, which means she'll be useless. But unfortunately, Camilo is too in this moment as he is going to drop. And unfortunate for, for Nemo here. I think if Camilo could have broken the barrier for Soul, he might have had a chance here. Uh, but Soul was just a bit too much to overcome here. So well played by both sides. And congratulations to Hosoka on his first win in the WDL. Next up to bat in the Wazette League, we have the blue team versus the blue team, which is a common theme in this league as everybody seems to like the color blue. But we have Nora's Gang coached by Mao and Elite coached by Greatestness. That's the full axe composition coming out from Greatestness. Love to see this very, very cool team here as Mandate of the Heaven's Blade is online for Howlet the Heaven's Blade. Mao with the double uh, ice along with Earth Comp with Murmur, Curry, and Howlet. Very cool to see. Dark Golem Synergy versus Axe Synergy. Let's see who wins out. Concentration coming out from the Cyrell here. Try and get that agility up. Defense piercing. Frostmob Barrage is going to land Frostbite onto Grifford. That is really, really big to land this this early in the fight. Looks like Curry is off on the side to try and land Frostbites while the other two stall and basically get all their buffs online. So tonight the moon bleeds red. Will the other team bleed red here as Halloween Lucio pops his own DMR? Enduring Formation is there for Grifford. Sitting there with 53 AP, by the next time he takes a turn, he will probably only have 30-something. So that could be pretty huge. And it looks like the Dialdo TMR used by Howlet the Heaven's Blade means he will nerf Bravery if he is able to hit, which can mitigate any sort of physical damage from the other side. Curry with 36 AP should be able to land another Frostmob Barrage here. Does he land another Frostbite onto Cyrell? He does not. So she might be running the Dark Bahamut Esper along with a Trust Stone. I feel like there's a chance that Greatestness is probably running 25% on everybody and just caught that unlucky uh, side of things for Grifford. As Claim the Flag comes out, that VC tech, Disrupting Axe Throw, is enough to take about half of Curry's health down. And Halloween Lucio going to enter the fight, but he is the, the big thing in this fight. 
does Mao have the accuracy to hit this Halloween Lucio is my question, as Seal and Cleave will take out the Curry, but honestly, he kind of did his job already. He did some chip, he got all of the AP to basically bleed away from Grifford, which means this is kind of still a 2v2 for a little bit. As Magia Arte comes out, the limit break from Howlet the Heaven's Blade, what kind of damage is this going to do? Turns out a ton to the Cyrell, also an okay amount to Grifford. Honestly, tanks it up 3,500 pretty well but does drop the Bravery, which could be big. Dispel Slam does about 3,000, also dropping the healing power, which means if Murmur comes in for any sort of additional heals, they won't hit as hard as they would have. Grifford should be in range to just do a standard attack, but again, that Frostbite looking pretty huge here. Murmur should be able to at least get some damage down unless she goes for the Cure. It's going to be the Flare. This is not a general barrier break. I believe it's just a magic barrier break, but still good damage onto the Grifford, and Howlet should be able to clean him up here. I don't think he has a way to hit both him and Halloween Lucio, but he does, I believe, have the ability to make this a 2v1. I take that back. He does have the way to hit both of them here. Good chunk of damage on Halloween Lucio. Only needs to be able to hit him one more time to win this fight. Lucio going to go with the Vampiric Ripper, though, to try and make that harder on him. Steals back some life. And is it going to be enough as he is taking his sweet time to think about his next turn? How will the Heaven's Blade? It's not going to give him that chance, though. If he has the accuracy, this fight could be over. Heavenly Dis Diffusion comes through. He does have the accuracy. And Mao and Nora's gang gets on the board this season with their first win. Even in the playing fields of both teams are at 1-1. One and one. An excellent fight, and congratulations to Mao. This next fight is going to be Meeful, coach of Lightning Warriors versus Maraxis, coach of Bento Box Bullies, both competing to try and have a 2-0 start on the season. As the Padfoot team are coming out immediately from Rafael, and just to take a quick look, seems like probably the same team comp coming out from Maraxis as we saw the first fight around. Same early turn rotation, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And on the other side, we have the Lightning Warriors rocking one Lightning unit in Rabbies, another Lightning unit in Lightning. And then, obviously, the Ildira to help with that CT. Keenblade coming in right here. Is this going to be the Ildira limit break? Is this the Cheeseblade strategy? you love to see it. This is so much extra CT for the team. Can Meeful take advantage here? What is this going to do? CT up for a number of these units. Obviously, nullification to statuses. And I think it even drops Man Eater on attack. Lightning with her pursuit buff. She is ready to go here. And Ildira going to get that height 3 resistivity for the tank. Ravi should deal a nice, or do a very nice job tanking up here. She's going to have courage. She's going to walk forward. Although the positioning is a little weird here, as she is just barely off to the side of the Lightning Shadowless Blade from the Rafael. So she is not actually in position to hit the tank. So she just goes with the backline healer. However, Eldira should be able to shake this off, I think, and just heal herself up next turn. Magic Burst comes through. Actually gets dodged by the Lightning. I do wonder if that Halloween Lucille VC is being used here. Celis is not an accurate unit. Deals very good damage to the Celis. This Lightning does, but misses the Rafael. Does she have the accuracy to hit this dodgy unit? That is going to be the question. Is she is going to try and be the main carry here? Shadowless Blade, just shy of 3,000 damage, but does increase her defense piercing rate and snow healing from Velus. So both sides are going to be having a heal support ready to go. Blinding Cross is an, a guaranteed hit. Also lands the blind on a fail. So interesting fight here. Celis going to follow up. Going to go with the Magic Burst. Dropping that AoE resist, obviously. And is Rafael able to hit people while she is blinded? The answer is yes. Heavenly Wrath coming in for a decent amount of chip here. Velus is going to follow up with a Sub-Zero. It gets dodged by the Ravis, though. A couple of units here. Ravis can be very dodgy with the right VC setup, and this is making me think that he probably is running that Halloween Lucio VC, but Armshot gets dodged by Rafael. She says, I don't need to be able to see to dodge you. Doing the very best Daredevil impression that she can here, as Celis is going to go next, and she is going to pop the Limit Break. Elegant Spinning Edge. This is going to amp up her attack resistances. Although I'm not really sure how much it'll matter as she doesn't really have hate. But honestly, an okay amount of damage to the Ravis considering uh, she is not really known for her damage. Heavenly Wrath though is putting in work. And this Rafael from Araxis is just crushing again. Ravi's going to go with another Blinding Cross. That guaranteed hit is huge. But unless Lightning can take out Rafael, I think it's over. And honestly, it's probably just too late anyway. Velus might be in attack mode. He is not. Snow Healing is going to peel everybody up to full again. 
And man, oh man, this is going to be hard to overcome. Lightning's going to have to hit all three units with a giant follow-up, and it's just not going to happen. But we'll find, she'll find the damage on Novellus, but it's too little too late. And Odira looking at her. Where is she in the turn order? I feel like I haven't seen her in forever as Magic Burst comes through for extra damage. And Odira is finally going to get her turn after Lightning is going to be down for the count. So Meeple tried his best. Honestly, I thought a comp that could work quite well into this. But this Rafael is putting in work for Meraxxus. And this composition that he has designed is just very, very scary. This should be a win for him here as Snow Healing is going to come off from the Velus, And Ildira just does not have the means to take anybody out here. Going to gain a little bit of AP back is Rafael. Celis should follow up with a nice little cleansing blade, getting that slash chain going. And Velus, I think, should be able to clean this up. It's going to be the Sub-Zero, 4,600 damage. That is going to be fight and match set over to Meraxxus. Huge congratulations for him. Very well played. Starting off his WDL debut, 2-0. and oh. Very, very well done. Our final fight of the week is going to be a banger. It is Isvar versus Shadow. It's the last matchup of teams trying to compete for 2-0. Both started 1-0 this week. The Dragon's Bloodline, Aliyah Rundall team are coming out from the Valade on Isvar's side alongside the new Elda and Lorenzo. And Shadow is running the same comp back that he used to win his first matchup. So very uh, similar stuff to what we saw from the round one. Obviously, Winter Mashri is gone from Isvar's side in place of Valade. We'll have to see how this pans out here. Obviously, great Staff Devout and Spear Synergy on Vision cards. I expect to be, I expect to see both teams putting in work here. Arrowfall going to hit the Lorenzo, so nullifying any sort of haste or quicken that he would have. Unfortunate for Shadow, it didn't hit the Elda, so he is still getting some advantage from this haste. But obviously, Helena with her ma massive physical health shield, my goodness, is definitely going to help. A lot of stat buffs coming out from Valade, though, as Lorenzo's going to get Protect online to try and mitigate those two missile attack unit damages. And Revitalize is here for Krace. So Krace, unfortunately, couldn't get out ahead very much to try and get stuff done before the fight kicks off like she could last time. But Punishing Slow Arrow is doing a nice little chip, bit of chip to the Lorenzo. But this massive Elda, Lion's Reign coming down, removing Uni from the fight right out of the gate. That haste putting in work so that he could cross the, the map very, very quickly. And Helen is going to hit a Rose Blast, though. Good chunk of damage and lands the sleep onto Lorenzo. Doesn't break through the barrier for Elda, though. So that is actually pretty impressive tanking by Isvar. Took less than, I think it's 5,000 damage, I believe. As the full life is going to come in from Belade, but it whiffs on Lorenzo. Will that be the difference in this fight? As Taunting Blade comes out and cleans up the Krace. And I feel like we've seen this fight before. Elda Leonis versus New Helena. Husband versus wife. I think we saw this in the Rundall video. Who wins it in the Wazette video here? Obviously, Valade is still here to back it up, but this is the main show right here. Honestly, not a ton of damage coming out from the Helena. She gets her heal, but she was already full health. Elda going to go with the Lion's Drain, going to heal himself up nicely and give himself some defense piercing. Helena might be able to one-shot this Valade, though. Is she going to be able to? Rose Blast does not one-shot and does not land sleep. Valade might be able to go for a heal here. He's going to start channeling a spell. What is it going to be? No, it's an Imperil. It's the offensive Valade, and it gets reflected back onto him, which means he is going to die. The Spear Throw comes out from Elda, though. Drops the Helena. She comes back with her re-raise. She is going to return damage. Can she kill him here? 90 AP, Rose Blast comes through, no sleep again. I don't know what exactly Isvar is running, but he is fully prepared for this sleep from Helena. Very, very well done. That honestly, uh, spoiler alert for other leagues, that might be the first time that Helena's lost. I'm not entirely sure about that, but she has been probably the most impressive unit uh, of this week. And Isvar coming in with a banger of a team. That was absolutely perfect fight, I think, to end this week on. Very, very well done by both players. But congratulations to Elda's Angels, coached by Isvar. All right, guys, season four, week one of the WDL is officially in the books. All videos and all divisions have wrapped up. So until next week, this is it. Let's take a look at the standings in the Wazette division to see how it shakes out. We have a two-way tie in first place with Isvar, coach of Elda's Angels, brand new player to the WDL, really put on a showcase with his Elda. Maraxis, coach of Bento Box Bullies, also a brand new player to the WDL, formerly big player in fight Friday Night Fights, 
but really uh, putting up some good work so far. Both of these players are sitting at 2-0. Obviously, Dervis as well is undefeated, currently sitting in third place, coach of Section 9. One of his opponents would have been Tayo, so he never had the opportunity this week to get two battles in, but he is still undefeated and obviously could be tied with them if he were to win another game. In fourth place, we have five different teams who are currently sitting at 1-1. One and one. That is Mao, coach of Nora's Gang, Greatestness of Elite, Shadow91 of the Vanergand, Mifel of Lightning Warriors, and Hasoka of Eggplant Brigade. All members getting a win and a loss in the books. And Garokin, currently sitting in ninth place, hasn't gotten a win, but has only lost one time. Again, he's the other player who would have played Tayo this week. Hopefully we get Tayo's issues fixed soon enough, but as of right now, sitting at zero and one. In 10th place, we have a two-way tie. Alcor of Royally Funked and Nemo of Lions Guard. And in similar fashion to the Rundall video, I have Tile listed last. Obviously, record wise, he is not actually last. He would basically be right in the middle since he hasn't won or lost. However, to keep things clean and easy to watch, uh, until they play their matches, I'm just going to keep them at the bottom. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys look forward to next week. If you did, uh, throw a like on the video, hit subscribe, leave a comment about your favorite color, or favorite food, or your pet's name or something like that. I sure would appreciate it. So thank you guys so much for watching. And until next week, have a wonderful day.